All right, Unbound by Ann E. Berg. We're going to start part two. Woo! Page 174. Like, hoth mocks, like hawk moths skipping from leaf to leaf, a wild frenzy enters the cabin. Rub your feet top and bottom. Everything what fits. Not so much. Save some to cover our tracks. Put this on. Only a drop. Pepper to throw the dogs off of our scent, layers of clothes to guard against the brambles, and drops from the blue bottle to keep the boys quiet. You thought of everything, Aunt Sarah whispers. They can't stop our voices from speaking. They can stop our voices from speaking, but they can't stop our brains from thinking. Shame burns a hole in my stomach. If the missus had stopped my voice from speaking, we wouldn't need to run. Uncle Jim wraps the supplies that I brought in a rag, and he ties the rag to a walking stick that he carved for Aunt Sarah. My heart's hammering and wombling and sickness rolls over me, but I keep moving. Mama takes Willie and I take Thomas. Uncle Jim ties knots like their limp arms around our necks and locks their legs around our waist. He lifts Aunt Sarah onto his arms, light as a goose feather, he whispers, balancing the walking stick on his shoulder he looks around the cabin, then he nods outside. Mama turns her eyes upward. May the good Lord be with us. Amen, we whisper. Each in turn, except for Thomas and Willie, have already been in heavy asleep. We breathe deep and we step out of the moon, out into the moon's white circle into the shadow of the night. Uncle Jim leads and then comes me and Thomas and Mama and Willie and we move together in a single line like a lumpy caterpillar that's looking for a place to lie down. My arms already ache with holding, and every step my braveness drops away like milk in a holy bucket. Mama's behind me whispering prayers, and I wonder if the good Lord and his angels is telling her that it's my broken promises and haughty words that set Master Allen and sending her and my brothers to the auction block. You are nothing but a slave who needs to learn her place the missus said. I should have listened to Mama. I should have kept my eyes down and just said yes, ma'am, and no, ma'am. Aunt Sarah and Uncle Jim warned me. Why didn't I listen? Why didn't I listen to Aunt Tempe that knows her place, even if the good Lord did make the stars bright and beautiful for everyone? It don't take long to reach the fields and the small swamp where I once covered myself in mud to make my skin brown as Mama's. That seems so long ago. Long before I knew about blue doctrine bottles and brandy drinks and dishes would come all the way from England. Long before I knew about blindfolds and ladle stars and whippings and smokehouse. Long before I understood that there's some people that's born to rest and some people that's born to toil. To toil means to like work really hard. Beyond the swamp is the woods, deep dark woods I never dared enter. Deep dark woods that's filled with wild animals and evil spirits. House, field, swamp, deep, dark woods. I'm stepping through the quaggy edges, what mark my world, and I'm wishing I had minded everybody's warnings. The damp swamp air prickles my face and pinches neath my arms. A branch cracks under my feet. Somewhere above me, an owl hoots, and a lonesome whipper whirl repeats the same sad warning. What will Master Allen do when he finds we's gone? Will Aunt Tempe and Anna get punished because of me? All my writingest words have only brought danger to everyone I love. My mouth's parched as a dry bone. Fear leaves a trail of tingly bumps like a feeling I might faint. Must be Mama's angels still holding me up, still helping me carry my load. Uncle Jim keeps moving us deeper into darkness. How's thee knowing which way to go? Uncle Jim, I whisper. How can you see the ladle stars? Uncle Jim stops in a thicket of tall trees and low bushes. We's not following the stars, he whispers. We's find him freedom another way. He puts Sarah down. Wood's too deep. We won't make it to Cooper's before sunup. I think I know a hiding spot. Be quicker to find if I go alone. Uncle Jim trucks tucks us in a ditch and covers up with leafy, covers us with leafy branches. Thomas whimpers, but don't wake up. Just hurry, Mama whispers. 
In the distance, I hear an angry howl. Lest the missus came looking for a cup of tea, it's too soon for the dogs to be chasing us. I won't be gone long, Uncle Jim says. Gracie, you take care of your mama. What would Uncle Jim think if he knew that my readiness was the real reason that we was running? Why didn't Master Allen just send me away? My neck's bent to my chest and my knees is folded into my belly. But the pain feels good because I deserve it. A muddy, dull light sifts through the branches. Morning birds boss away the night with their busy chatter. I like that line. What's taking Uncle Jim so long? Soon Master Allen will be awake. The missus will be sitting with her silver spoon and fancy dishes that come all the way from England, and she'll be waiting for her biscuits while Aunt Tempe explains that Grace is still feeling a bit faint. Or will Aunt Tempe tell the truth? I woke up and Grace was gone. Haughty Grace, who don't know her place and won't keep her mouth shut, has done run away. What do you guys think? you think Aunt Tempe's going to tell? I don't know. Me and Mama is the only ones not sleeping. My lies and misleadings and broken promises as a bumpin' in my brain, begging me to tell Mama the truth. I'm so worrying about how to tell Mama that I don't notice tiny branches crackling and dry leaves crinkling. I don't notice heavy footsteps coming closer. Finally, from the corner of my eye, I see Mama's hands shake and my ears open to a terrifying scramble of heavy, hurrying footsteps pounding and scraping above us. In the distance, I hear a steady, certain gallop, or gallop, which makes the earth tremble, a heavy, rhythmic clop, 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 that moves closer and closer. Aunt Sarah opens her eyes. Mama reaches for my hand. That clumping sound is just overhead. Clop, 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 swish. A powerful thump and a heavy swoosh. A cackling scream, an anguished howl. Mama squeezes my hand. The galloping fades. The earth stops trembling. But I don't. Whew, that was a close call. Floating between the heavy crackles, we hear a hoarse whisper. We need to hurry. He's only knocked out. My head's drowning in panic and fear. A wild scratching paws at the earth. In and one loud crinkled instant. Soft copper daylight floods our narrow dirt-packed prison. Old George Cooper stands above us with his whiskers blooming in the sun. Gotta hurry, he says. Paddy Roller's on our trail. Could be a renegade, but more likely he's got a posse behind him. Okay, a paddy roller is like a slang term for a patroller, which is another way to say like a Kind of like somebody who is on the hunt for runaways. Uncle Jim's ready, already reaching down and helping Mama to her feet. Old George Cooper lifts Aunt Sarah and places her on a nearby log. Stretch your bones quick, he whispers. Uncle Jim stoops down and scoops up Thomas and Willie, still heaving in their sleep. Squinting in the sun, I climb myself out. I stretch my neck and shoulders. I shake the fear and tingles from my arms and legs, and I see what I hoped I would never see. Curled like a dead skunk on the ground before me is a scraggly, whiskery man wearing a hat in a fuzzy, tattered coat. A patty roller! I know all about the hate patty rollers carry inside, but I never thought I'd see one curled at my feet. I wonder, did Master Allen send him? Or is he the kind that goes prowling on his own all hours, day and night, just looking to cause trouble? Hurry, Uncle Jim says, handing Willie to old George Cooper and giving Thomas to me. The horse got away, but his lump will be waking up soon. Uncle Jim slips the rifle from the patty roller's arm and gives it to Mama. Jim, no, she says, but he makes her take it anyway. Oof, 